Hey, hey, what's up, garden and friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. Why are all the fish hiding? What's up, guys? They're not used to me being able to stand on this side of the pond, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I'm refilming my intro because I had to redo some stuff in the video and I forgot to say hello. So, hi. The video originally started with me asking you guys if anybody had any facial sunscreens that they would recommend. And, um,. Then some controversy came out about sunscreens. I was like, I'm not even, nope, not doing it. But if you have anything you recommend, let me know. And I did like a full day wear test with some, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The plants have been moved. So that's spoiler alert. Also title the video. So hopefully not really a spoiler. There's still a few little things that have to wait to go out for various reasons, but the bulk of everything is out. There's a lot of rain in the forecast. I'm pulling off on the yucca and some of the succulents. Like I said, I'll explain more of that later. It really is pretty much all that happens in this vlog though, so I don't think I need to put in any time of like timestamps, except um, oh, I did go on like a really long rant about mealybugs, so I'll timestamp that in case you're not in the mood to listen to that, because it goes on for a really long time. But otherwise, just a casual hangout moving plants around. So I hope everybody's doing well and uh, get into it. The Talanzia. Oh, she's blooming and it smells so good. You guys ever smell the flowers on these? It smells phenomenal. I am going to do some work with my camera since it's not focusing and then start moving some plants out. It's about time. I'm gonna start by moving this poor ginger out of the sun. This poor plant. I moved it so I could... Well, that doesn't matter. I was trying to take pictures of it. That's, that's, that's all there is to that. It's too much light for it, though. It doesn't need that much light. You see how the leaves are all crumpled up? It didn't appreciate the morning sun too much. Turn the hose off. Water got a little bit low in the pool. I had drained this down quite a bit because it was supposed to just rain and rain and rain, and I kept having to drain it down because it was almost overflowing. And then it stopped raining. The forecast has not been accurate, which made vlogging last week really difficult. Now, the forecast for this week, today's Sunday, it's Cinco de Mayo. It's uh, saying it's going to rain all week. So this might be it for the vlog. Might just be today moving some plants. I'm not going to do everything, just some of them. Because it's not like some great big grand transformation. Everything has to be set in the shade for a while. Always some dead stuff I have to prune off of the foliage. Off, that's, off the plants. The foliage is what I'm pruning off. And um, I have to do like spraying and stuff like that. So it's not like I'm going to be setting them out and making everything look pretty right away. That takes a little bit of time. Hello. Hi, Hibiscus. How are you? You're looking beautiful today. See, so for example, here is a uh, big yucca. And this is all of like last year's foliage on it that's come off. And this is all the new growth that it has on it from this past winter. I got to trim that stuff off. Because... The way things are set up in here, there's like an entire section of plants I can't access. I mean, I can, but it's difficult. And which is not at all ideal for growing the plants, but it's just one of those things where it's like you work with what you got. I cram them together closer than they should be. And that's why things like mealybugs happen and whatnot. And you can get rot and whatnot from not having proper airflow. I do have circulation fans in there to help prevent that, which uh, I haven't had any rot issues this year. But I can already see there's some stuff I'm going to have to prune off. And sometimes with these yuccas, my accent was heavy though, sometimes, it wasn't even a good accent, um, if I bring them out and let them kind of hydrate for a little while, let them sort of do their things for a couple of weeks, this part right here, this growth swells out a little bit, and then these, the dead leaves, just pull right off. They're not quite to that point yet of just being able to pull them off. So I'll probably just like do a trim and leave a little bit on so I can pull them off more cleanly when they get to that point. There it is. That's a lot better. Other trunk down here. Almost lost that during the winter time. It got kind of soft, started to rot a little bit, and uh, I put some sulfur powder and like, it was, I think it was this one or that one back there. I can't remember where it was like turning black, and it looks like there's, I mean, obviously they're putting out new growth, so I guess that they're okay now. See, like I got more for that big girthy trunk. I don't really care about that one, so it's the, as long as the big one survives, I'm fine with it. Not fine with it. I prefer that. Now you can um, pull that out and repot it and maybe give that away to someone, a friend or something or some other installation. But obviously it's going to take several weeks. Need to get it bouncing back. And then here I have a heliconia that's just kind of starting to come out of dormancy. I keep them shallow when I overwinter them so that there's not a lot of moisture that goes in there for the rare occasion I do water them. So this one needs to be repotted. I need to keep this in the part sun, really maybe even shade for right now. Just gonna set it 
over here for the time being. Um, I'm also doing like heavy thorough mealy bug checks for everything. I pull out this one, pass the test, and it looks okay. And since I have to repot it, I'm not really that concerned about that anyways. The yuccas, and I'm doing things like sun versus shade back there. This anthyrum's looking horrible. So I have two of these larger anthyrums, and with one of them, I kept it in more of a shady location. <laughs> and um, the other one, I gave lots of light through the artificial lighting. And this is the one that wasn't getting as much light. I wanted to see what the difference would be, and it's there's a big difference. You'll see when I bring the other one out in just a second. So can you tell which one of these was getting high light and high water? And this one actually was getting a fair amount of water, but um, not quite enough. I think where I had it, it was getting hit by the fans a little bit too much and drying out a little bit quickly, but yeah, huge difference there. This one really didn't dry out very often. I had this on the edge of that pond in there, right where the I have a bubbler, so like there's a little bit of mist that would come up around it, and um, it never stopped blooming at all. It's been blooming ever since I brought it in, which was like early November, I think, maybe. I got this one over here in the shade so you can see it a little bit better. I had someone ask me about the uh, flowers, their flowers turning green and fading. Mine do that too, it's just usually an aging thing. Like here's a really old flower back here, and it's taken on more of a green hue to it. You can prune them off if it's bothering you. I don't really bother pruning flowers off of these guys unless they're still like doing their thing. So, or that didn't make any sense. If the plants are not flowering, like they're not putting up any new flowers from inside, like you see that little pink guy in there getting ready to come up, then I will go ahead and leave the old ones because it's something to look at. But as long as it's putting up fresh flowers, I don't. if I don't like the flower, just cut it off. It's no big deal. I would much rather the plant put forth the energy into putting up more flowers that look a little bit better than holding on to ones I don't even like. I'm also going to be repotting these. Do I need to do that in a separate video? Does that need to be a video of repotting in thyrums? They've been in these pots for a pretty long time, so... I'm gonna do that. It's gonna be a very similar soil blend to what I used for my palm tree last week, but I'm gonna add a little bit more bark to it. That's pretty much all I'm gonna be doing other than cleaning the roots out and everything. Okay, Plumeria. I know, she looks sad and wilty. I did water this not too long ago. I'm doing the mealybug check. I think this is okay. There's some signs of some maybe white fly damage in here. I'm sorry if that was out of focus. I was looking at the leaf, not the camera, my bad. Just to be safe, I'm gonna give this a watering to help plump it back out, and I'm gonna give it a heavy spray with some neem and get all that leaf litter out of there. That just gives the critters a place to hide. I, I should, I said that weird. I need to repot this guy too, actually. So I'm gonna put you over here into the part sign. Um, I wonder if that would fit up there. Like the pot. I think that that might, you know, like this. Is that going to fit in there? Oh, perfect fit. Unnecessary, but I'm good with it. I don't know why. This is because it, it, uh, it won't blow over as easily now. That's why I did it, not just because it looks kind of cute. Anytime I have plants when I'm moving them that seem thirsty, I am very careful when I move them. I don't like to rock them around a lot. I don't like to, you know, be careful not to drop them and those sorts of things because they're going to bruise more easily. I want them nice and swole when I move them. And this one, it's been watered, and then this one's actually been outside for a while, acclimating to the sun, but it just still looks thirsty, which can also be a sign of like spider mite damage. But uh, I don't think that's the case. This was in a location in the garage where the fan wasn't quite hitting it, the circulation fan that's on that side. So that's probably all that is. That Hopefully that'll perk back up pretty soon. Hmm. Alocasia fry deck going over here with the anthyrums and uh, they passed the millibug inspection so they're good too. I haven't had to water these guys once because if you watch that vlog when I got these they're potted up in like pure peat, doesn't drain well, it's a uh, very waterlogged. So I kept them on the cool side of my garage not in the actual grow space so when I watered the water runs out underneath them so they did get watering from underneath, but uh, they're looking okay. A little dusty, but they're looking all right. Put on a good amount of growth too, actually. It's only been a couple weeks, maybe three weeks. This three is not a couple, it's a thruple. Go ahead, take my cart here. And with this, just pull this, okay, behave, come on. Right there it says push, push that down, lift this lever up. Sometimes it takes a little bit of maneuvering, but 
that's it. It'll snap in place and I can load it up with plants. Went ahead and threw a piece of shelving on there. A little wonky, obviously, but it makes it so things don't fall through those slats in there. Cardboard works too. Really anything. This is just, it's, it, it was right there. It's what I had. Go ahead, staghorn fern. Another plant I think I may want to repot. Doing a mealybug check here. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Is that a mealybug? Yeah, better safe than sorry. So this is going to go over where things are going to get sprayed. I'm checking out the blue star fern here. Looks okay, which would be kind of surprising because it was sitting right next to that staghorn fern. So this might get sprayed too. With the ferns, I'm just going to use neem, the actual like insecticides. I don't think would be a smart route to go because it can be a little bit harsh on them. So they're going to have their own little quarantine. I have this bromeliad here. I've had this one for several years. The center plant just came out. I went and pulled that out. These are the pups it put up last year. And um, this one, I thought bloomed last year, so I'm surprised that's still hanging on. Sometimes it takes them a couple years to die off, or maybe the, oh no, this one right here bloomed last year. So that came off of there, doing the, doing the checks, seeing if things doing okay in there, go ahead and pull out some dead foliage. Not a lot on there, so that's good. And ultimately everything, I'm gonna be spraying everything just to be safe but I want to make sure that if something like I'm actually seeing the mealybugs on them, then I know where to put those. Pardon the shopping cart. That was from a, it's a long, don't worry about it. It was an impulse buy when Toys R Us was going out of clearance and going out of business and I just, I don't know what to do with it now. Should have done it, but I got a cute video of my dog rolling around a cart in it. So that, that was worth it. Oh yeah, see that? This is that staghorn fern. Definite mealybug action going on there. So that's, that's why other plants aren't going with these guys if I see mealy- Oh, I didn't see any mealybugs on you. Well, it's okay. Here's a little croton I got on clearance last fall, and it almost died. It wasn't looking great when I brought it home. It was mostly just sticks. It's put out some new growth. Doing okay. I mean, for 50 cents, it's fine. <laughs> Not much to it, though. But, uh, you know, some heat and fertilizer being outside this year, I bet that'll look a lot better here in a few weeks. Bird's nest fern. I almost lost this one this winter. It was so hard to keep it hydrated. That's another, pretty much everything over here is getting repotted. It's kind of my repotted, repotting section. But that, that soil it's in just dries way too quickly. It shouldn't be that hard to keep a bird's nest fern hydrated. That thing, it, it was a pain in the butt this year. And here is my Tahitian Flame Hedicium. This is one that normally goes like fully dormant in the winter time, but I got just enough water to kind of keep growing. So I could just cut all that off and let it start over. I don't think I'm going to do that though. I want it to use the chlorophyll it has in here to re-energize and get going again down there from the rhizome. You can see that rhizome down there, it's still firm, still good. So that's fine, don't see any mealybugs on it. So don't need to worry about that one right now. Sago palm, I've already unpotted it. It has mealies, and I want to make sure to get in there and clean out its roots really well. So that one's getting sprayed. And up here, hanging baskets. This is an epidendron radicans orchid with a big old weed grown out of it. And it looks okay. I'm not seeing any mealies on it, so that is good. Also, I know that I said I'm spraying everything. I'm like, this is getting sprayed, like as if I'm doing something different. I'm going to be using different types of spray, so some things are just getting neem, other things are getting rubbing alcohol and like actual spray spray, like hard chemical spray, because they have so many mealybugs on them. So that's what's going on here with the alocages at least, but this up here looks okay, the chlorophytum, spider plants. I don't see any mealies on that, but I don't trust it, and I see a bit of a gloss on the foliage there, which tells me that this is, it's excreting some type of sap. Okay, there's ants in them, so that's going in the spray pile. <laughs> Wanna hear a funny story? This one time I started moving my plants outside and was gonna do a video about it and come talking about spraying them, but I didn't buy any spray. I'm gonna go do that now. Whoops. I'm home. Pardon the harsh lighting. I got my neem oil here. What I've been doing is pulling out all the old foliage, anything that was bent or broken, getting that off, trying to get as much of the old crusties 
off of the trunks here as I can because the mealies will live in there. There are a lot of ants in there too, which isn't surprising. The ants will kind of like farm the mealy bugs. So no shock there. I haven't gotten to this one yet, but that's that's what's going on. I'm just going to go through and absolutely soak the foliage on these guys, tops and bottoms. I'm going to let it sit there for a while, and then I will give them a rinse and uh, move them back. These are also probably going to get a systemic. Maybe. With the alakajas, I'm not as concerned with these guys when it comes to the mealybugs as I am with, like, the areca palms. Because whenever I move these guys out, they tend to kind of throw a hissy fit and drop a lot of their foliage. So I, it's like I'm spraying for the mealybugs, but they're going to be gone anyways. But they can live for like two weeks off of their host plants. So it is still important that I make sure that I spray absolutely everything. And I'm going to spray this down here too, because this is going into the yard waste, which I don't, not every city has this, but there's a company that comes through picks up yard waste for you. And uh, I believe a lot of that gets composted, so I don't want to send off infected material to the compost. So I'm going to make sure everything gets absolutely drenched, soaked, and rinsed off. I could use rubbing alcohol too. That would work fine. Or sometimes I've used rubbing alcohol and then the neem, which it just doesn't seem necessary since the neem or like the alcohol alone usually will kill the mealybugs. But um, they have a waxy coating on them and that waxy coating can sometimes make the sprays repel off of them and not work. So it's important very important when you spray these guys, <laughs> name everywhere, that you see uh, that the color on that changes. So you know that it's penetrated that waxy coating that they have on them. And uh, it would be better to be doing this also with some overcast, which they don't have. It's going to be rainy or sunny. That's the way it's going to go. So like I said, I could go ahead and just cut all the foliage off probably. <laughs> it would be fine. They're all acacias. They're going to, as soon as the heat kicks in in like a week or so, they're going to go crazy again. So it's not something like I don't need to be too obsessive over it. Like I said, I'm not as concerned with these guys as I am the other, but it's still important that everything gets treated because these guys, they move around. It's not like they're just going to stay on these plants. They'll go wherever they want to. And I don't want that. I'm trying to keep this as controlled as possible and to eliminate the problem this year. I'm done dealing with this. I'm sick of it. It's the next day and uh, there's still mealies on these guys even after spraying them. I know doing the like high pressure blasting is really popular. I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like to actually kill the mealy bugs you have to use a really high pressure. These that that they're so delicate. As soon as I move them out, like I said, they just, meh, they throw a fit about it. So I don't see using high pressure to be a great option in a situation like this, or even on my Eureka palms. I got most of them off of the uh, these alakajas here. There's still some. They're still going to need more spraying. I'm going to be repotting them, so I'm not going to apply any systemics just yet, but um, I'm out of spray come over here and show you why. By spray, I mean neem. I went ahead and I moved the Eureka palms out last night, late last night, because it's supposed to rain and need to get the spray on these guys long enough so it has time to dry and everything. The It's not as effective once it's dried, but the point is to, like, I need to be able to repeat the process and if it's raining, I can't keep putting it on there. And there, there was a little bit of wind last night. There's a few messed up branches that just kind of happens. Nature of the beast when I move these guys out. But, I mean, just look at Look at these were, if you don't know and you haven't been around, the Eureka Palms are where the mealybug problem started. They've been an issue every single year. And um, this year, are you alive? What are you doing, stink bug? Yeah, this year, the worst it's ever been. I tried going natural and organic and with the fish. That I have fish there in that grow room. So I can't like go hard with the sprays because neem is great for mammals, reptiles, birds. Not great for them. It's not as dangerous. <laughs> towards them but um fish it can be slightly toxic so i couldn't go heavy with the spring so this year i'm going to be on top of it like crazy i'm at war with these mealy bugs and yet, this is after getting a pretty heavy spray last night so i'm gonna have to step it up i don't think the neem is going to cut it with these guys but i'm gonna get some more and um yeah i gotta run to the hardware store and get that but yeah, so far, been through five bottles of neem. <laughs> That's a lot for, um, what, six plants? Yeah. 
Th these are the ones that have the worst infestations. The other plants, I'm not really seeing many mealies on them. So I'm not as concerned about those. I'm, I'm still going to be spraying everything at least with neem on a regular occasion here. So, yeah. Time to hit up that. Also, it's early. I'm going to get some coffee and hopefully my energy will pick up a little bit. What are you doing? You're not supposed to cross the line. Get back. Tucker, show everybody how good you are. Get back. <laughs> it's not that yet. That's great dog training, isn't it? Let me see here. I was hoping to go for a run this morning. That would have been way better for popping up my energy, but I, don't, I think I only had like a couple hours till the rain comes in, so I need to spray again before before I've lost that opportunity. You good boy. Yeah, you're feeling so much better, aren't you, Toby? Oh, did you give your brother kisses? You such good dogs. Okay, so I am home. I got my sprays here. I am absolutely drenching these guys top to bottom, letting it dry a little bit, going over it again, repeating that as much as I need to. Hopefully this is in focus. Can't see my screen. Yeah, that looks okay. So yeah, that's what's going on here. I know it was probably a little bit weird. I ended up dividing things into two separate vlogs because when I was gone, I ended up being gone for a long time. Not too terribly long, but I did enough filming that I thought it kind of warranted its own separate video instead of making this one like 15, 20 minutes longer, however long that video came out to be. So that's what's going on here. Spraying them down. Gonna keep keep on doing this until there's no signs, no visible signs of the mealies on here. And uh, like I said, this process is going to have to be repeated for sure, but I don't want to move these guys until they've been sprayed and treated and watered. I want them to be nice and sturdy before they get moved very much. I don't want to damage the trunks. I already have one trunk that's in here. The spray is kind of hitting it right now that the mealy bugs did a lot. I mean, that might be the first time I lose a trunk to those mealy bugs. So is what it is. Doing what we can right now to make sure it doesn't happen again. So yeah, that's that's that gonna keep doing this and bring the rest out and spray those down too hopefully i'll be able to do that today i just went to um finalize and release the second part of last weekend's vlog and it's it's not there so i'm going to re-edit that one and get it out so if that video comes out kind of late like late in the day that's what that was about just gotta get this done while i can it should be i was hoping it'd be a little bit more shady over here Really shouldn't be dropping these right into the bright sun. That might damage the foliage. I mean, <clears throat> hold on. There was a breeze. I'm trying to stand downwind from everything because you don't want this stuff blown around on you. Um, yeah, that's what that's about if the vlog comes out kind of late in the day. So sorry about that. I'm just going to, like I said, keep on spraying, move more things out and check those out and spray them too. Let them dry before I move them. <laughs> Fun, exciting stuff, right? It actually is pretty exciting. I think it is. I am really excited to be doing all this. Finally. And welcome to day three of this project. There's still some branches I need to prune off of here, which is no big deal since I have it on the cart like this. This cart, every time I have it out and it's on camera, I always talk about how much I love this thing. It's come in so handy for so many things. It can hold a lot of weight. The tires do tend to pop when I put something too heavy on it, but, um... That's only like one plant and I haven't moved it out yet. It's going to be the last one since it pops the tires. But anyway, so this has had its name two days ago and then it got the pesticide yesterday. And um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it to focus very well. It's very windy, so everything's blowing around me. I think you probably get the point. It, it's looking better, but um, there's still some spots on here. It's the mealybugs, you know, they get into every single nook and cranny on these plants. And then uh, I did make sure to go in and remove any of the dead browning pieces of crown that are in here. The sheaths that lead up the trunk that the frond comes out of. Those turn brown. These are a self-cleaning palm, so they shed those on their own. So I kind of want to give this another spray. The other one, I've already moved down there. It's, it's really tiny, but it's all the way down there amongst the rubble. I'm I'm trying to like gather things together and sort them out and uh, get them cleaned up and tidied and put away. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. 
I mean, you can still see in here. Well, you could if it would focus. Oh, here's one that has some light in it. Maybe you'll be able to see that. So, see in there? Kind of, right? You can sort of see it. Their little nest that they've created. And these branches, they, being foam feeders, they suck out that sap and things are kind of sticky. So you can see this frond is slightly pulled together from where they've made their little house in here. And it looks like, nah... It does look, I see some legs, some legs, there's some legs wiggling in there. But this is a process. It's not going to happen overnight. It can't. I don't want to put too much on this. It'll kill the plant. And uh, I don't use chemicals that often. Uh, it's just really a last resort. And uh, the neem just wasn't cutting it. I do, like I mentioned before, plan on using a systemic in here, this is for the ants where there's mealybugs. There are ants, you need to control both of them. Yeah, the thing with the systemic though, I don't want to do that at the same time as I'm doing the foliar. I want to give it some time. I mean, these poor plants are going through an awful lot right now, being moved and the change in the light and the temperature and the breeze. I have my fans in there, but they don't create this kind of wind. And then um, the neem and then the chemicals. And I didn't, I don't recommend any chemical because I, if I knew one that worked well enough to recommend, I wouldn't be having this problem. So that's what's going on there. Yes, basically I'm going to wait a week or so for actually probably two weeks. Give this time to recover and adjust, give the whole plant, you know, time to sort of do its thing. I'm sorry. My older dog keeps pooping on the patio. He's not a big fan of going to the grass anymore. And I try and pick it up, but there was just some in that shot. So I'm sorry about that. I'm going to give it time to recover. A couple weeks. I know I keep saying the same thing over and over again. I just, I want to make sure I'm talking about it thoroughly enough that I'm getting it all across. Sorry. And after a couple of weeks, I'm going to be pulling both of them from their pots. They'll get a root pruning, not because they need it, not because it's beneficial to them, just because I'm going to have to, to get them back into these pots and get some fresh soil in there. Some pots, some pots, some palms do okay with root pruning. Others do not. It's really, they like to be root bound. So root pruning really isn't very necessary unless there are a lot of dead roots. And that varies from palm to palm. The Eureka should be fine with it though. It's going to be mild, but I'm going to get it out. I'm going to flush those roots out and it'll, I'll be doing all that in a video. Um, but the main thing is that I need to completely sterilize and these guys need a whole new reset. And then when I repot them, uh, I think I should actually probably give them the systemic first, shouldn't I? What do you think? I think if I give them the systemic, Give that two weeks and then repot them and then uh, two weeks after that give them the systemic again i have to look at the directions for the one i'm going to use but i think it's a monthly application so that way it has some time to get it working up into the system but that's what i'm thinking here and then in the meantime i will be using neem because i don't want to just keep soaking these with chemicals like i said that can kill them Especially if you do it in conjunction with the systemic, it's good to spread it out a little bit. Also, because it's a, th I've read a few studies that seem to suggest that the systemics are more effective on new growth because it's transported better into new growth than older foliage. And I think that's a lot of what's going on here with my Eureka palms, why I've had trouble getting rid of them. Which is why last fall when I brought these in, I pruned off all the foliage and gave them a systemic, but it turned out to just not be an effective systemic. It was uh, Bayer, one of the Bayer ones. Didn't, didn't, obviously didn't work. So uh, I'm not going to acclimate these to light. Normally with a palm, I'll give them a few weeks to acclimate, uh, bring them out into the shade, and then slowly move them out into the light so the foliage doesn't scorch. But um, I'm not attached to this foliage, honestly. This, I know that sounds weird, but it's the new growth that's going to transport that systemic to them. So. I don't, it, it, it can burn. <laughs> I'm going to still put it in a part sun location, more part shade, part sun, somewhere in there. But I'm, like I said, I'm just not as concerned with acclimating these guys. That was a lot, I know. I'm so sorry. I just wanted to make sure I was being thorough. And since I have this down, I may as well use it as an opportunity to trim off any foliage that isn't looking pretty. It's a little bit harder to reach up to that stuff when these are standing upright. They're too tall. They're getting so big. Yeah, get that off of there. And the more airflow that's in here, the better, really. So, I'm not, I don't know. Oh, and there were other reasons that I don't want to keep spraying it. One, it's incredibly windy and I don't I don't need it spraying in my face. And then back to the light thing. Uh, what was that? I'm trying to make sure I say everything. Oh, 
Mealybugs like shade. They like dark. It's why they get into all the crevices of the plants. Why I'm sure if I were to pull back this piece of crown shaft, yeah, look at that. There's a nest in there. That's gotten sprayed though. So if I put this in the dark and I do put it in the shade, then I'm potentially just going to cause a problem for that entire shady area. I'd rather lose the foliage. These things grow fast and I, I'm fine with it. I think that that's probably the smarter thing to do than to risk them being like, oh, we need to abandon ship and then just infect everything else in the shady area that I put them. Leave it to me to take something somewhat simple and somehow spend 10 minutes talking about it. You see this? So this is why I like the cart. You get the big stuff on there and you just push it like this. Really easy. As long as there's nothing in the way, like a hose. I need to get a hose reel for this hose. It's a very thick hose and um, I can't find a hose reel that can hold it. Well, I can find them, but it's just so expensive. So for right now, this will have to do, typically I have one on each side of the hot tub, but it's very shady over there. So now, nah, right now they can hang out together. The mealybugs can move from one plant to the other, which have both been treated. So hopefully it will help get rid of them. And that is part 20 of the mealybug saga on the Eureka Palms. On an entirely different note, I don't know about you, but I'm so sick of even talking about these Eureka Palms and the mealybugs. This windmill palm, this poor thing, I have been trying to figure out, had been trying to figure out what was wrong with it all winter because I would like water and it just wasn't doing well. And then <laughs> I realized when I brought it outside, see that? Its pants fell off. So that explains why I was having trouble keeping it hydrated. Add that to my list of Everything needs to be repotted. Oh, right. And Fetsia japonica is out. It did have, I noticed, a couple of brown leaves in there, which isn't the end of the world. This guy is actually, these things are so easy to overwinter. I keep them on the cool side of the garage and don't water them too much, but they get water from below. From when I water the other plants, it runs through underneath them, but not a ton. And I, no bugs, nothing, which I'm really surprised by because this, the mealy bugs like these guys. So just spider mites, but. No, held up really well. Looks pretty good. Even put on some growth and it has new stuff coming out. That's awesome. Parlor palm also. Few little brown fronds to pull out, but otherwise looking pretty good. No buggies on here either. This guy's put on a lot of growth over the years. Chinese fan palm. Looking good. It's from what I'm seeing at least. And there's some tattered leaves. But otherwise, looking okay. It's just about, just flushed out with some new growth and new frond coming up there. That's nice. Um, wait, why am I putting plants that aren't infected underneath the palms that are in? That was a bad idea. I need to move these. And then everything else is moved out except for the little guys. This freaking sago palm. I spray it and I spray it. This is just like the Eureka palms, always a mealybug magnet. The roots have been flushed out pretty well, so I'd say it's safe to go ahead and pot it up, which I will do, but I really kind of want to handle these guys first. But I have, it's been sprayed a few times now, just with neem. Ow, oh yeah, that's what they do. So maybe I need to go a little bit more extreme, I'm thinking, because the neem doesn't seem to be cutting it. The uh, Alakaja Ludia, looking okay. Not fantastic, but okay. It's foliage is holding up better than the Borneo Giants, which is what these were sold as last year. I don't know if they are, but that's what they were sold as. And I haven't been seeing bugs on these guys since I sprayed them, so I think they're good. This guy's growth has held up a lot better to being moved out, which is nice, but you can see still some buggies on there. So spray, you need to spray that. And the Crotons, these defoliated completely in that horrible cold we had last October that came out of nowhere. So this is all new growth. There are some dead stems that I need to, some dead branches that need to be cut out, but otherwise they survived. <laughs> so that's good. And I think that they will take off nicely now that they're back outdoors. Over here, the philodendron salom. Splitly philodendron, no bugs, but I did give it a little spray down with the neem just to be safe in case I miss anything. Same thing back here with ficus lorata gotten some spray just to be safe just with the neem this is all new growth on here so remember this lost pretty much ah oh man see okay yep gonna have to go harsher gotta lift up all the leaves and do the checks and i just missed those there's a lot of stuff coming out that's why i'm kind of trying to keep things that have the bugs together over here and uh, i'm gonna move him 
so they don't spread onto that, but I'm thinking those are just gonna have to get a harder spray, probably. But yeah, that's all new growth. This also was a plant that defoliated completely from that frost, just like the spindle palms and um, the alocajas surprisingly held on okay from that cold. Spider plants, they've been sprayed. I haven't been seeing the ants or anything on there, so they're uh, getting a little bit too much light though. So I need to move these to a lower light spot. I'll probably just tuck them back into a corner for now. Then I have this variegated alocaja. This is Okinawa silver. And I haven't noticed any, but I've seen like the patches undersides on the undersides of the leaves from where it would have had some nests on it. So I don't know. So that's also gonna spray. This is gonna need to be divided this year too. There's all kinds of growth down here. I need to split up and move those around. Oh, nap time, Toby. Nap time, Toby. Yeah, you good boy. Yes, you are. You feel so much better. Yo, okay, I'll let you sleep, sorry. Then I still have my tables here in the grow space with um, the smaller guys on them. And I can't move these out yet because the place they're going, my tiki bar, it, it, well, I'll show you. See, it still has the Christmas lights on it and everything. So I'm trying my best. I don't want to disturb them, but see the baby birds. So I'm trying to leave this area alone, but this is where the smaller house plants and the succulents will go because it helps shelter them and shade them a little bit. They are, they're getting pretty big though. So they should be fledging pretty soon, getting out of that nest and I'll get my tiki bar back. Just like a week or two and that will be done. I don't know why, you don't need to deadhead hibiscus, but I do it because it's just instinct to snap those off of there. But I don't need to. I um, was thinking about putting the sago palm in this. Would that look dumb? I mean, I think it might, but it might look dumb in kind of like a cute way. What do you think? I'm probably gonna do it anyways, but what do you think? Now, not the most ideal pot for a sago because it's very, very deep but it's sturdy, so it's not gonna blow over. The sago palms can get kind of top heavy. So I feel like that would be a good option for it. Looks like I missed a couple of crispy leaves here on this bird of paradise. I was shocked that this wasn't infested with mealybugs because they tend to get them whenever everything else does, but nah, like I really didn't see any on here. So that's really great, still got sprayed. Like I said, I sprayed everything with neem just to be safe. Than anything that needs more than neem because it's or i'm on day five now this video started on sunday today's friday so i really think oh that's six days so yeah six this is this would be day six and after multiple sprays with the neem if i'm still seeing the mealy bugs then i'm gonna go ahead and use the other spray on them just to be safe and like i mentioned before it's a multi-day process because they move out i mean multi-week month process because they move around they hide in the nooks and crannies. You can't usually get them all with spray, so you have to repeat. I need to repeat it. So there's someone mowing the lawn, so I'll pick up in a minute. Yeah, real quick, look at how gorgeous this Aeonium is. The, I think it's Kiwi, right? Aeonium Kiwi. So pretty, isn't it? Total sidetrack, but just had to show it off. It's gorgeous. I think that's everything. I'm pretty sure. Gingers are, at, well, those, that's new. I think there's still, uh, there is still a ginger inside that I need to wait to move because the insulation on the ground is in the way. And then, sorry, I'm kind of checking things a little bit as I'm going, multitasking here, vlogging, and that's not how I should do it, sorry. Everything's out that can come out, I already explained that. So, I guess that's it, I'm done. Look how much the bananas have grown. Look at, they've, so much in just a week. I should have done a shot of that at the beginning of the week. That would have been smart. I'm pretty sure when I started this vlog, I had mentioned that I was anticipating this to only take one day. Not taking into account that I need to spray and then let things rest and respray and let things rest in the rain and yeah. I can't wait for these guys to put on some growth. It's one of my favorite elephant ears. What I really want to be doing now is I want to start planting. I cannot wait. I've said that in like the last three videos. There's, there's things I had to get done first. That's coming out this weekend, which I'm super excited about. But like look at all, how empty everything is. This is all going to be full of plants here in just like a week or two cannot wait i really want to get going on it right now but i shouldn't because i there are others i need that i'm busy <laughs> it's a, it's not important there are other things i need to do at this moment but i oh cannot wait there's a very large palm tree that will be going in right here and it kind of shades everything so i need would prefer for that to get here first because it gives me a better idea of the layout for what i'll be doing around it it wasn't that complicated to explain things have been off to a slow start this year and that's partially intentional just because 
I realized a few weeks ago that this is one of the first years I don't have to absolutely rush like crazy to get things done because there's no family coming in town, there's no weddings, no huge parties, anything like that like there have been the last few years where I had to get things done really fast. Like I can garden like a normal person. I don't know if that'll be entertaining for YouTube. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, it'll still be me doing everything, so you lose some normalcy there, right? But yeah, now I can start doing those things. These are Kawakaja Bikini Teeny, I believe. They are runners. They move around like crazy. I mean, these were originally planted like 15 feet the other direction, and you can see they they move around quite a bit, but they're really cold hardy. I mean, this is zone six, and they did great. I don't protect them because they're always somewhere new, so I don't see a reason to. But very cold hardy, nice dark stems on the bottom, and really pretty veining, and they have a slight cup shape to them, kind of like the coffee cups or teacups kalakaja. When they fill with rain, they sort of pour forward and the water comes out. Really cool. Okay, I suddenly just started doing a plant spotlight. What I really should be saying is bye-bye. Yeah, just kidding. Won't be that abrupt. I'm getting these potted up next week, and uh, I want to start on my front porch with hanging baskets and things like that. So that's probably what'll be going on, or maybe during the week. I don't know. We'll find out together. Thanks for hanging out with a, just a lot of talking, shaky camera work, and just things being all over the place. It was a chaotic week, so that's why the vlogs were also a heavy week for vlogging, because it, it's just the way it had to go to get things done. Sorry. It's also a pretty heavy week for vlogging, because I vlogged a lot, and I didn't, with the weather and everything I was doing, just didn't really have time to film a formal video, but there are some things I want to talk about, so... We'll get back on track here pretty soon. So if you're not into the vlogs, sorry. Can't please everyone, but like I said, I'm just gonna start planting things. I'd like to, there's still some house plants I wanna talk about and do separate videos on. Look at the size of this. I really wish this hibiscus had come with a variety name because it's really possibly one of my favorites and my top five probably. Okay, I think I've updated with everything. I spent so much time talking about mealybugs in this video. I feel like there's just a lot I need to say that I wasn't able to talk about. So there's that. Like I said, I hope everybody's doing well, doing great. Life's just going beautifully for you. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, you could hit that thumbs up. Helps the videos a lot, helps the channel a lot, makes a big difference and I appreciate it. And subscribe as well. Because I upload multiple times a week. So hit that notification bell, that way you know new videos come out. Whirly birds clogging up my beautiful palm fronds. Get out of there. I have my social media link down below. Follow me and I'll follow you back. I use Instagram far more than anything else. And it's a lot of fun on there. Cause I like seeing everybody's pictures and talking with everybody. Hit me up on there, say hi. Like I said before, I'll say it again cause I mean it, hope everybody's doing well. And as always and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.